All right, lesson 9.3, the Pythagorean Theorem. So we're going to first take a look, and I tried to make this a right triangle. So let's just use something to indicate that this is a right triangle. This formula can only be used on a right triangle, and what they found is if they have a missing side in a right triangle, we can use this formula um, to calculate it. So when you're looking at a right triangle, they have uh, three parts. There's two legs. This would be leg A. This could be leg B. And the diagonal. The diagonal has a special name. Does anybody know what that is? Slope. Well, it does relate to the slope of a line, so I will go with that. But the special name they give the right triangle is for the diagonal is the hypotenuse. And that's side C. And what they found, what Pythagoras found, was that when you take A squared plus B squared, it is always, always equal to C squared in a right triangle. And when you think about what they mean by squared, right? If you have side A and you square it, it's kind of as if there's a perfect square with side length A here, and so A squared would be the area of that square. The same would be true for B, and I'm actually going to run out of room on the PowerPoint so that you can't see the full area of that. But if you added those two areas together, it is always equal to the area of the hypotenuse square. Okay? So we literally are talking about squares when we say A squared, B squared, because it's a side length and the area is side length squared. Example one, find the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle with leg lengths of 28 centimeters and 45 centimeters. So I go ahead and draw it out. I'm a visual person. <coughs> and I use the formula. So, 28 squared plus 45 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Using my calculator to make life easier, I get 784 plus 2,025 is equal to that quantity, C squared. Add them together. And since we need to know C, remember C squared is C times C, we have the function that undoes squaring another number, and that's called the square root. So if I take the square root of both sides, and we've already studied square roots, I would get 53 is equal to C, and that is what I needed. In example two, we are just going to label um, some sides. So A and B are going to be the lengths of the legs of the right triangle, and C is the hypotenuse. So now what if something is missing? In this case, we don't know B for the first one. So we would put in the formula. Well, I'll just write the formula up here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we're just going to have to uh, do a little bit of algebra and, and move around some of these variables so we know the 12 squared. We have 12 squared. So 12 squared plus b squared is equal to 20 squared. 144 plus b squared equals 400. Just do um, and solve for the variable. So we want to subtract 144 from both sides. So we'll get b squared will be equal to 256 and that last function is to undo squaring the number so take the square root and we'll get b equal to 16. We can fill that in. Same thing would be true if a is missing. All right, We don't automatically just add the other two numbers and take the square root. We only add them together if c is missing. So we have to do a little bit of a sidestep here and subtract that from c. 
So, a squared plus 36 squared is equal to 39 squared. If you subtract 1,296 from both sides, we will be solving a squared equals 225. I think this is in that memory bank. I asked you to memorize the first 15 perfect squares because if you take the square root, you will find that a is equal to 15. In example three, we're looking at, this is a theorem, okay? It, and a theorem is, is something stated to be true. So if a triangle is, it's like an if-then statement. If a triangle is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The converse of that is that if you try it out, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, like I give you three side lengths, then the triangle is right. So let's use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to determine if it's a right triangle with these given sides. Does a squared plus b squared equal c squared? 3 squared plus 7 squared equal 9 squared. 9 plus 49. Does it equal 81? No. So no, number 1 is not a right triangle. So let's try 2. 24 squared plus 45 squared must equal 51 squared to be a right triangle. And in this case, when you add these together, you get 2,601, which is 51 squared. And so, yes, the second one does form a right triangle. So in this first example, we'll have, I'm just going to use x because it's there, and substitute it in, plus, so this would be like leg A, and this is like leg B, the diagonal is leg C. So we have 48 squared would be equal to 52 squared. So we have to subtract 2,304 from both sides. Therefore, x equals 20 meters. In this case, x is the hypotenuse. So therefore, we are working with, um, in this case, a squared plus b squared will equal x squared, which is equal to c. So we have 24. 0.8 and we'll square that. We have 21.8, we'll square that, and that will be equal to, I'm just going to substitute it in with C, because that's equal to C. All right, so decimals make it a little messy, but not too bad. And when I added them together, I got 1,090 and 28 hundredths. And we're still taking the next step of using the square root. So we're going to approximate it to be, and I'll round it just to the hundredths place. Yay. I didn't do the point zero.